everyone. Thanks for joining us for our second webinar. I appreciate you all being here. We're up over 200 and climbing, so that's pretty exciting. Um, we have people here from all over the world, which is really, really thrilling. Um, so thank you for joining me, and hopefully I give you some good tips and hints today. I'm going to be working a lot with textures, um, of course, a little bit of topaz in there as well, because, you know, for me, those two kind of go hand in hand. Um, so I'm going to close this uh, intro slide and we're going to get started. I am going to switch my pointer. I have this little program called Pointer Focus. And some people said they have a hard time seeing my cursor as I'm moving around. So we're going to give this a try and see um, this little yellow circle will follow my cursor and hopefully that will make it easier to see where I'm clicking um, as we go through the projects. So let's get started on project number one. Now, first thing, you will notice that it seems my images just appear without me going up to the file and the open button. I work with two monitors, so I have all of my images ready to go on the other monitor. So you'll see me opening from there. I'll just be double clicking an image there. It will open into Photoshop or I'll be dragging in my textures um, from the other screen. So if you see things just kind of magically appear, that's why. Um, Alrighty, so let's get started with our first project. And let's see if I can reduce this little guy down, get it out of our way. Let me see if I can drag it. Yeah, we'll drag that over to the other screen because you don't need to see that in the way. And we can close our nick because we're not going to use that for right now. Alrighty, there we go. Project number one. I loved this flower just because of that little curly petal in the middle. But of course, you know me and I want to do something else with my images. Um, I've done my basic adjustments on this in Lightroom. Oh, and by the way, everything we're doing today can also be done in Photoshop Elements. So if you're not a regular Photoshop user, you can do these projects in Elements or Affinity or On One. Anything you can do layers with, you can do these projects with. So if you're using something other than Photoshop, you're still in good shape. So the first thing we're gonna do is duplicate our background layer. And I use the keyboard shortcut Control J. And that's the other cool thing about this little pointer. You'll see my commands pop up at the bottom. So that'll also help you um, know what I'm doing on a particular image. So I've duplicated this and I'm going to start by taking it into my Studio 2. And the first thing I like to do on pretty much every image, um, once I've done my basic stuff, is add our AI clear. I think that's the greatest thing photo, uh, that Topaz has ever invented. Um, what AI clear does is add um, clarity, detail, and denoise all in one shot. And it's smart enough to know where it needs to do all those different things. Um, so we've added this, and if I click on here, you can see there's my before and there's my after. It's subtle, but it's there. We can also, if we want to enhance the sharpness a little bit more, I'm going to click on high and just give it that little extra crispness because we're going to be applying some other things to this as well. Um, the other thing I wanted to do while I was in here, I did some cloning in the background of some distracting images, but I want to darken that background a little bit. And one way we can do that in here is I'm going to click on add a filter and I add an HSL color tuning. And what that is is hue, saturation, and luminance. And I'm going to go into just the greens. And if I hover over a color, you can see where that color is. So I want to click on the greens and I'm going to bring the lightness of this back down a little bit to darken some of that green in the background. All right. Now, it did also darken the green in the center of our flower, which I did not want it to do. So we're going to add a layer mask. And we can do that right here in um, Studio. So we're on this layer. You can click on the layer mask icon. It opens up the masking function. And I'm just going to use a brush. And I have it on black. And the size looks pretty good. And I've got it kind of in the middle for softness, so it's not super soft brush, but it's not a hard edge brush either. And I'm just going to, and the red is showing where I'm doing my masking. Until I let go of the cursor, you'll see that red. 
So I'm just holding down on the cursor and doing this all in one stroke so I can kind of see where I'm going. And you can also see what I'm doing. Once I let go, you'll see the effect over on the actual mask. So that works pretty much like Photoshop. It's just you get this nice little overlay and I think it makes it easier to see what you're doing. And so now I've let go. You can see here's my mask. If you missed a little, you can go back and we can get that pretty well. So we've taken that effect off of the flower and the center because there is a hint of a green in here. So that's why I want to mask the whole flower. And we've darkened our background just a little bit. So I'm going to click up at the top toolbar, the accept to go back to Photoshop. And here's our, our before and there's our after with it on a separate layer. So now I want to add a creative filter to this and I'm going to go back to Photoshop, uh, sorry, back to Topaz. So I'm going to duplicate this layer again, my control J. And, and those of you who've seen me teach before know that I like to keep things on separate layers. And quite often when I'm first doing a project, especially if I think I'm going to want to teach it, I'll rename a layer and you can just double click on the name. And so in here I could say, you know, AI clear and uh, we did an HSL. Okay, so I'll know what I did in there. I'm sorry, my husband's interrupting me. Oh, somebody is asking about notes. Thank you. Good question. I do have the notes available for today's um, webinar, like I've done um, with the one a couple weeks ago and some of my Topaz ones. Um, it would be the notes, the images, and the textures that I'm going to use today. They'll be available in my um, Peacock Studio web store for just $5. And at the end of the webinar, I'll put up a link to that for you. But if you go to meredithimages.com and click on the Peacock Studio, they are available in there, as well as the ones from the previous one and um, four of the last um, Topaz webinars that I did. Um, I also excuse me, I'm recording this webinar. So later tonight, I'll be posting um, the link on my YouTube channel. Um, and tomorrow you'll get an auto email from the Zoom system and I will have the link included in there so you can watch it again. And if you have the notes then you can follow along with the projects. So thank you, great question. Alrighty, so we're gonna go back to this layer. Um, we're gonna go back to our studio. And again, you could do all of this in one shot if you wanted to in studio. I just prefer to do it this way. There is no right or wrong. It's whatever is more comfortable for your workflow. Um, this one time I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a look. Looks used to be called presets in Studio One and in most other programs, but it's the same thing, a look or a preset. So I'm going to click on here. And the one that I want is under um, the impression style, it, it includes some impression, so you can kind of narrow down your selections over here. And the one that I like is actually this one right here at the top. It's called Abstract Impression Painting, um, and this was by Lorenzo. This was one that was actually included in Studio One. So I had favorited it there and brought it over to Studio Two. If you don't have Studio One, in the notes, I did include the settings for the basic adjustment and the impression adjustments that make up this preset. So you can recreate the preset if you don't have it. Um, so those settings are also um, in the notes. Um, but I really like this one. I just like the way it, it kind of feathered the edges a little bit. It really gave it that painterly look. Um, I didn't want to change anything, so I'm just going to accept that and go um, back to our Photoshop. And then there's one more thing I wanted to do, and I don't do this often on images, but I thought it might be kind of cool on this one, is to add the look of a picture frame, which we can also do in Studio. So I'm going to duplicate this layer again, and we're going to go back over to Studio 2. And in here, I'm going to go back to our filter menu. And you'll notice my list seems shorter than the full list because I have it on my favorites. So uh, things that I use quite often 
I have favorited so I can see a shorter list, but if you want to see all of them when you're working, you can just click on filters and then you'll see the entire list. Um, just, you know, to save time when you know it's something that you like, you can do it this way. And I'm going to select digital frame. And then we're going to change up. These are the defaults. It comes up with this blue texture on the frame. Of course, that's not what we're going to keep. Um, but I'm going to go in now and change all my settings. So the frame size, I'm going to make the frame itself a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to change the ratio of the mat to the frame. So the frame becomes bigger and the mat becomes a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to change the image depth, which is um, kind of like giving it a, th a little more 3D look. I'm going to actually lower that just a little bit. And went too far. Mm, about there. So then we can come down here and we're going to change the settings. First, we're going to do the frame and then you can actually change the settings separately for the map to choose the color and texture. So under frame, I'm going to make the shadow strength a little higher. I'm going to leave the shadow size at that and those two at one. And then when you come down to this part, you can choose the type of frame you want. You can choose a texture out of the regular texture menu, or if you wanted a solid color, you could just choose color. I'm going to use a texture, but I'm going to change the texture. Um, so let's slide down here. And the one I want is called Starfish. If you hover over the textures, you'll see the little names pop up at the bottom and they are alphabetical. So we're going to come down quite a bit. And this is the one that I wanted, this nice light brown. But I wanted, I thought it was just a little bit too light. So I'm going to actually bring the brightness of the frame down a little bit. Just make it a little more a darker tan color about there. And then we would go back up here. And if you wanted to change the mat, you click on the mat and you can go ahead and choose that. But I actually like this default um, texture they have in here and it's called Pillow Fight. Um, so it's this nice, like, just a slightly off-white kind of a color. Um, and I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to click Accept, and that would be our finished project. So from here, you would do, you know, your file. I always tell everybody to do Save As. I never want to accidentally save over an original image. Um, I already have this saved, so I'm not going to save it now. But to keep our layers, we'll save it either as a TIFF or a PSD file. I prefer the TIFF format because if you do want to take it into another program like on one or affinity or anything else, those cannot read a PSD file that is proprietary to Adobe. So I prefer these days to uh, save things in a TIFF file just that way if I want to take it somewhere else, I can and I can also see the images when I'm here in my Windows Explorer where it can't read a PSD file either. So I will cancel that one. We're just going to close this guy and go on to our next image. This one is going to be a silhouette. And I actually had seen something on Pinterest that I thought was a very cool effect. And I kind of replicated in my own way um, with my own images. And it was um, a bird silhouetted on a tree branch. So we're going to create that here with this image. So the first thing we're going to do is I want to get rid of this sky because I'm going to bring in textures to create a different sky. So we're going to use for this one the magic wand tool because it's a fairly consistent color. I'm going to just click somewhere in this sky and you can see the marching ants going all around the branches. So it's done a really good job of selecting the sky because it's a pretty continuous tone. Then I'm just going to hit the delete key on my keyboard. And now I have a transparent background. So the keyboard shortcut control plus D is going to delete the marching ants, deselect it. 
And now we're going to bring in our textures and I want those to be behind my image. So what I'm first going to do is I want to add a blank layer underneath this file and I'm going to fill that layer with white and I'm going to show you why in a second. So first let's add a blank layer and I'm just going to drag that down to the bottom because I want that to be our background. I want to change my foreground color to white. So I could either just hit the little arrow here to set the default back to black and white. Uh, you can either click this little symbol or you can hit the letter D on your keyboard, just D, nothing else. And that will set the default of black and white. And then to flip those around, again, you could use the arrow or if you like to use keyboard shortcuts, just hit the X and it will flip those. That's really handy when you're masking something is to just use the letter X. So you use like generally you're masking with black and then you want to, you know, you make a mistake and you need to paint it back in white. Just hit the X and you can flip flop it and you don't have to keep moving your cursor over here to switch those. So that's just a little handy tip. So I do want to fill this layer with white and that is now our foreground. And I like the keyboard shortcut Alt backspace. On a Mac that would be um, option backspace. And that fills our layer with white. And the reason I do that is once I bring in my first texture, if I didn't want to use that texture at 100% opacity, I wouldn't want it to be transparent. But if I have the white behind it, I can just lighten it without it getting transparent on me. And you'll see that, in, I don't think I do that in this project, but in one of the other projects, I will do that. So you'll see that more later on. Okay, so our first texture we're gonna bring in, I'm dragging these again from my other screen. So I'm gonna drag over, um, this is from one of my Cosmos collections. This is from the Cosmos 2, because this is number 14. And I'm just holding the shift so I can stretch that out. And then you can either hit the check mark or the enter key on your keyboard to accept that change. And I am going to leave this at normal and 100%. I'm going to bring in another Cosmos texture. This is also from the Cosmos 2 set. Stretch this out. And now this one, I'm going to change my blending mode to multiply to darken it. And I'm also leaving the opacity at 100%. And it didn't take my check mark, so there we go. So you can see before that, that was the one texture. And now it's just really given a deeper richness to that blue color. I'm going to bring in a third texture that has um, some darker edges to it. This is another one of mine from one of the Watercolor Blues collection. And I am going to rotate this because this image, it, it's not quite a vertical, but it's a little bit more vertical than horizontal. So just so that I stretch it a little less, I'm going to rotate it. We'll move it up to the corner. Again, hold the shift key and that will let me stretch it. And this one we're going to change to multiply as well. But I'm going to bring the opacity back just a little to about 80%. So again, without that one and with that one. So again, it just gave, got a really nice, rich kind of evening sky look. Now I want to add my bird to the image. So I am going to drag in an image. This was a red-tailed hawk that landed in the trees in our backyard here in Tennessee. And it's pretty far away. It's the very far edge of our property. I shot this with my uh, 150 to 500 lens on a tripod and it still was pretty small, but I, uh, I took the picture and just silhouetted it, pulled it out, you know, and uh, made my own silhouette image. This is actually gonna be in my next set of uh, bird brushes that I'm working on. So now we have our bird in position, we have our background. The one thing that I wasn't really happy with at this point was our tree is not really a truly black silhouette. You can see some highlights down here still on the branches. So I'm going to 
just take those branches because they have no background. I'm going to use the fill to fill those in with black. However, if I do that on the layer the way it is now, if I just did, let's change our foreground to black. If I just did the alt backspace to fill that layer, it's going to fill my whole layer, which I don't want to do. I only want it to fill where the branches are. So what we need to do is where it says lock up here above our layers, just hit that little checkerboard icon and that locks that layer. And what it's doing is locking the transparent pixels. So it will not add color to anything that's transparent. So now when I do my alt backspace, it just put the black where the branches are. So now we have a really nice rich silhouetted image. Um, and that project is complete. However, I did do another version of it just to show you how you can go in so many different ways with textures. I'm not going to go through all the steps of this one, but I'm going to show you another version. Um, so let me open up this one. And I will show you the different. I also used various textures on this one. I used watercolor textures instead of the Cosmos. And these are actually from my soft watercolor collection and one it's from the Boca, first Boca collection I think I did. Um, so you can see I just I layered in, let's start here. So we layered a texture, then we added some green, then we added another green, and then I added a border, and then there's our tree and our bird. So it just gives it a totally different look. Um, so when you're working with textures, you can go in any kind of direction that you like. It's all personal preference. I kind of like the blue one, but that's me. I like really deep, rich colors like that. Some people like the more pastel colors, which is fine as well. So have fun when you're working with um, textures because there's just, it's endless, the different possibilities that you can do. Okay. Our next image, this one we're going to do a few different things. I'm going to show you a little bit more about masking. Question yes, about question? Okay, somebody just asked about um, bringing in presets from Studio 1 to Studio 2, and I will show you that next time I open Studio. It's really quite easy, um, so I will show you that in just one moment. Um, so this one, we're going to duplicate our background, control J, and I am going to go into studio, so go filter, studio two. In case you're wondering, I'm getting fed my questions from my wonderful husband, Dave, is sitting at the computer next to me on, at his desk, and he's monitoring the questions. If I don't get to, I'm going to try and answer some at the end as well, um, and when with the recording of this session for me it also records the chat box so i can read the questions later and um if there are things i think you know that are pertinent and people will lots of people will enjoy i will try and also um answer some in the blog um on thursday either thursday or sunday but i'll i'll put some more in there as well um, somebody just asked if I should create the new layers as smart objects. You can. Um, I've started doing that a little more often than I used to. For some reason, I never really used smart objects very much, and I'll, I'll touch on that a little more if I can um, as we go along. But yes, that is another option. You can very well do that if you prefer. Okay. Um, so again, this is... Um, Edit, the basic editing was done in Lightroom. Um, this was taken at home, oh, I don't know, a year or so ago. Um, in my kitchen, this was just a trifold um, foam core, like the project board in the background. Um, this wood is actually uh, scrapbook paper that I just laid down there, and um, it's sitting on some books, and that's why it's kind of curled in the front, but I kind of liked that look. Um, and this was from my front yard. Um, so let's go ahead and do our AI clear. And that looks good. So I'm going to accept that. Oh, while we're here in studio to bring textures, or either textures or presets or anything over um, 
from Studio One. You go up under the Help menu, and there is um, a Migrate Custom TS1 Presets. So you just click on there. Um, what you first need to do is any of the presets you want to bring over that you did not create, you have to just favorite them. So hit the little heart on there to make them a favorite. And then you can bring over your favorites that way or any custom ones that you created as well. And you would just click OK and they would go right over. And when they come into Studio 2, they'll actually have a TS1 at the end of the name. So you'll know those were ones that came over from Studio 1. So it's that easy. It's just up under the Help menu. OK, so we're going to click Accept. And there is our AI Clear. Um, what I wanted to do next was bring out the green in the bottle a little bit more. And I'm going to use a texture to do that. So I'm going to bring over one of my own textures. And in this case, I really don't have to make it fill the whole thing because it's only going to cover the bottle. But out of force of habit, we'll do that anyway. So I'm going to lower the opacity of this some so I can see through it to see the bottle. Now what we need to do is mask everything except the bottle. So I'm going to show you another cool little trick. So I'm going to add the layer mask. When you normally add a mask, it's white, which means everything is revealed. All of the green is showing. Typically, you would take a brush and you would paint with black. But since I would have to paint almost the whole layer, I'm actually going to fill this mask with black and then paint with white just where I want to uncover the bottle. So I can do that by making this foreground color black. And I'm going to just use that same control we did to do the silhouette on the tree, do the alt backspace. And now I filled my mask with black. So that's why you're not seeing any of the green because the entire layer is masked. So I'm going to flip my foreground color using the X to white. I've got my brush. And I'm just going to brush where I want that color to show through. Now another cool little trick. If you want to draw a straight line while you're using any kind of brush, let me do this little side and it will start from the corner. So from this corner, if I want to draw all the way down and make sure that my line is straight, I can click once at what would be the beginning of my line, hold down the shift key and click where I want the end of the line to be. And you'll see that it just drew a nice straight line there for me. And it will remember where that last point was. So I can now, I don't have to click the beginning again. I can just go to the end over here, hold my shift, and it just drew another line. And I can click up that little side and then come all the way up here. And I'm just holding the shift key down. It also makes it very fast. And you can see how quickly I was able to do the outline of this and make it nice and straight. Make sure I got the top of that. And there's our bottle. Now, and yeah, I got most of it. Actually, I should have been at full opacity. So let's bring that up and we'll just go over that again really quick. That's another thing I was playing before with something else that was at 50% opacity, where this really should have been at 100. So that's the entire bottle now revealed. So you can see where we painted is white. And I'm going to change, let's change the blending mode to overlay. And I wanted the opacity at 33%. So you can see if I turn that off, that's our before. <clears throat> and that's the after. So I added a little more green to the tint of that bottle. Really brought that out a little bit. So the next texture we're going to bring in is one called Sunset. It's another one of mine. And we're going to stretch this out. And now I just want to warm up this image a little bit. And we're going to change this blending mode to multiply and bring the opacity way down to like 20%. So you can see before it's cooler white. So now we've got a little bit of an off-white, 
kind of look to it a little more warm. Now I'm going to bring in something that's going to add a little more drama to this texture. Um, so let's go over to my other screen and I'm going to bring in one that's going to look very dark until we play with this. And again, working with textures is a lot of trial and error. I don't, you know, bring these in for a shot and go, oh, I know exactly what I want to do. It's, it's a lot of playing around to see what works. Um, but the more that you work with textures, the more you'll have a feel for what might work on a particular situation. So don't be afraid to get in there and play. If you don't like it, just delete the layer. Um, so this one I'm going to change to, where's my third one? Uh, blending mode of overlay. And we're gonna bring this down about 70%. Okay. Um, so those are the textures. Now I wanna add a preset to this. I want to take it into Topaz and play with one of the looks. So if I were to open Topaz right now, it's only going to read this one layer at the top. It can't read all of the layers here in my Photoshop project. But I don't really want to flatten my image either. I want to keep these layers in case I want to go back to them later. So what I'm going to do is we can create a merged layer that combines all of these and places it on a separate layer above these. The keyboard shortcut for this one is Control, Alt, Shift, and the letter E. And there's my merged layer. And I always name that merged so I know what I did. Okay. Um, so again, it's Control, Alt, Shift, E. If you remember case, Control, Alt, Shift, E. And on a Mac, that would be Command, Option, Shift, E. So it's C-O-S-E instead of C-A-S-E. Um, so I want to take this now into Topaz. I'm also going to do a Control, J and duplicate that because if I like to do that because if I put something on this layer and I come back here and I go, yeah, I don't really like that after all, it's easier to just delete this layer and then I still have my merge layer to take back again to Photoshop. So that's why I'm duplicating it here. I'm not to Photoshop, but to Topaz. Okay, so let's go into Studio. And the look I want is called Lilac Wash. So since I happen to know which one I'm wanting, I'm going to change that to all. I can hit this um, little magnifying glass and just start typing the name, and then it will pop up to save time. Normally you're not going to know the name of something, um, although I do have some favorites. Again, I have the little blue hearts because they're ones that I, I do like. Um, if you wanted to go in and change anything, you could. Um, the only thing I'm going to do to this is I'm going to lower the opacity of it to about 75%, um, just so it's not quite as strong a pink color, but I just thought it was a really pretty very kind of high key look. Um, so then we're going to say accept and go back to Photoshop. And then what I wanted to do was I wanted to darken the edges a little bit. So I'm going to do um, kind of a vignette here in Photoshop, but I'm not going to use the typical black. I'm actually going to pick a pink color out of this image. So I'm going to add a new blank layer. And I want to fill this layer, so I'm going to click my foreground color. And I already know which color I want because I've tested it, but I just chose the color by clicking around in the image. But the number that I want is BFABB5. I'm going to say OK. Same thing um, the way that we filled a layer before. I'm going to use the Alt Backspace. And then to create the vignette, I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool. Typically, I use the um, elliptical one, but in this case, I just wanted to stay around the edges, um, kind of more of a frame than, than a true vignette. So I'm going to use the uh, rectangle. 
and I'm going to draw kind of like that. And then I want to soften these edges. I don't want it to be a hard edge once I delete the center. So I'm going to go up under my selection, modify feather. I'm going to leave it at 200 pixels and say OK. And you'll see how those edges really uh, kind of jumped in to let you know that it, it softened it there. And I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard. And that just takes out that center selection. Control D to deselect. And then I'm going to change the opacity a little bit. We're going to bring it down to about 70%. And you can see it just added a nice, soft, little darker pink edging to this. Now, the next thing I wanted to do to this is I wanted to add a quote. So we're going to add some type. So I'm going to click on my type tool. I'm going to use the type called Illusius. And you may not have all of these. I have a ton of fonts. I've got a bunch I need to import as well. Um, so you can choose any font that you want. Uh, the one that I chose was this one. I want it to be 100 point. When you hit this little drop down and you see the point sizes, those are like typical um, sizes for different, you know, when you're typing documents and things. But you can type in any size you want up to 999. So I'm choosing 100 for this particular font. And I'm going to set my color to 613731 and say OK. And I'm going to, I want it to be flush left. I'm going to start it approximately here. And I can always move it into position. And that is our typeface. Now, if I, to move this font, I can, there's two ways you can do it. I can double click in the T of this layer to highlight it. And then what you want to do when you're moving type this way, you don't want to click on the type. You need to keep the cursor off the type till you get the, the move tool that you can see down where the yellow circle is. And from there, you can move the type around. The other way to do it, if you select the move tool, it'll give you the handles around it. When you use the move tool, then you do want to click on part of the letter. You want to type, click where there are pixels um, or where there is type, because they're not pixels um, in, when you're using type, rather than clicking in a blank area, because sometimes it doesn't work right if you click on a blank area. So that would be my first word. Now I want to type some other words under here. I want to type um, where you are planted. I want it to be bloom where you are planted. But I want to use a different typeface for this. Now this one sometimes gets tricky. When you're changing a typeface, if I were to change it right now and click on the type layer, try to change it, it's going to want to change this layer. So what I've found usually works, sometimes it takes a little playing around with, add a new blank layer before you try to change your typeface. And sometimes I even add two. They're not going to do anything because type makes its own layer. So it's going to add another layer above it. <clears throat> so I'm, gonna, I'm on my type tool and I'm going to change this to, it's a face called intruding cat, which I have right here. I want to make this smaller. So this is going to be 40 point. I'm going to use the same color. So I'm not going to change that. And now I'm going to click down here and see how it jumped to that layer and it likes to do that. And this is something I, I got to play around to figure there's got to be a better way to make type not do that. Um, it's one of those little weird, I double clicked where I shut off, um, little weird things. Sometimes it just takes doing it a few times. I was playing with this last night and practicing and it just was being a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, this font was called Intruding Cat. Again, it may not be one that you have, so you can use any, yeah, that time it worked. Um, where you are planted. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm going to double click in here because I want to move that up under this font a lot closer. Um, I used to be a typesetter way back in the pre-desktop publishing days, so I'm really kind of picky about my type kind of stuff. I like to, when I'm working with different type, I like to kind of make light the different letters kind of fit in between things. Just kind of my thing, I guess. So I can delete this third layer here because we don't need that. That was that extra blank layer I added. So what I want to do now is, and I like to do this with type quite often, is I'm going to add some layer styles to give this type a little more depth. So I'm going to double click anywhere in a blank area of the layer. You don't want to double click on the word. You don't want to double click on the icon. You want to be over here to the right on a blank area. And when you double click, it's going to open up the layer style box. We're going to do three things to this type. The first thing I'm going to do is bevel and emboss. And once you select any one of these, you have to make sure that you click that row to get the proper controls in here. Um, this one I'm going to do at inner bevel. I'm going to make the depth 126. And again, this is just trial and error to find what works for the particular font you're on. 25 is good. 15 is good. And I usually don't change these down here too much. Um, so the next thing I want to change is I want to add a stroke. And what that's going to do is kind of fatten up the type a little. And you can see what the uh, bevel and emboss did. It kind of gave some highlights to the letters, which I think just makes them a little more attractive. So I'm going to click on the stroke line to get the proper controls here. And I'm going to set the size just to four pixels. Position outside, the blending mode normal, opacity 80 is good. And I want to make the color the same as my type because I'm just trying to make the type look a little bit bolder. So we're using that same color that our actual type was. And then the last thing that I like to do is a drop shadow. And for this one, the color black is good. Opacity, maybe 23%. I like using about a 135 angle. That means your light is coming at that upper left to lower right angle. Um, distance, I want 15. Spread, 34%. Size, 51%. And I just typed in those numbers since I already had them and then say OK. Now you can see we've got a little more depth to that layer than it had without that. If I turn that off, you can see there was the before. It looks very flat. Now it's got some oomph. Now I want to do those same settings with a couple changes, but mostly to this, the same things to this other line. So instead of retyping all of these, we can copy these layer styles and paste it on that layer. So if I go over here to this layer, right click over here in this empty area, say copy layer style, click on that layer and right click, and we can paste the layer style. And then because this type is a lot smaller, I might want to make a couple changes. So let's open those up. And there's just a few things I wanted to change on the bevel and emboss layer. So you can see all three of the things we added are here. I want to change the depth to just 43%. Oops, I hit enter, so I reopen that. And then the stroke, I'm going to just make one pixel. And the drop shadow, change the spread to 15%. And then we can say, okay. So you can say I just made a few minor changes to kind of make it fit better. And again, you can still move these around if you wanted to. If you wanted to move the two layers together, um, you could hold down the shift key and click so that both are highlighted and then use the move tool and it will move them together. And there's your finished image. So.
Um, somebody is just saying you could also hold down the Alt option and drag the effects to the other layer. Yes, there's always um, multiple ways to do things, but that's a, a handy thing too. So if you want to copy the layer style, just hold down the Alt key and then you could drag the layer style up. Thank you, Shelly. Um, always more than one way to do things in Photoshop. So let's close this guy. And changing the background to white. Um, okay, to fill the layer with white, it's um, you make your foreground color white and then do the alt backspace um, will fill your your layer with whatever color that you wanted to do. And I'm going to show you how to work with a shape with a layer now with this one. Um, so I have this cute little bear cub. This was in the Smokies a couple years ago. Uh, actually, I think this was last spring when Dave and I were down here and still looking for a house. And we found this cute little guy. It was raining, so that's why he looks a little scraggly. But it was him and two siblings and mom. So I've duplicated my layer. And for this one, I'm going to bring in a shape, which is also called a clipping mask. So what I want to do is I'm basically framing him, but using a shape rather than a frame or a, um, you know, a vignette or something. So I've brought in a shape and there are shapes built into Photoshop. If you use the, the shape tool down here, um, you can then click up top. Oh, not that one. Uh, over. Where's my shapes? That's not the tool. It's the tool. Where's the shapes? Anyway, one of these little lovely commands. Oh, there it is. Um, I was thinking that was the color. Right next to the color, you can see there are a whole bunch of shapes. Um, built into Photoshop. So you can use these. There are some that are called, you know, like crop shapes and, and you can click this little um, guy to see that there are bunches of different shapes in here. So you can use those as well. This is one of mine from one of my collections. Um, and what we want to do, I'm going to turn off this background layer for a moment. I want to bring my shape underneath this layer because we're going to clip the shape or the photo to the shape. So I'm going to click on my photo layer. And what we're doing is creating a clipping mask. So the keyboard shortcut is Control Alt G. And you can see that it shifted my picture over and there's a little tiny arrow pointing down that's telling you that layer is clipped to that layer underneath of it. And there are other ways you can do this as well, but I use the keyboard shortcut. And you'll see my little bear has now got that shape. Now I just was thinking about this after and I decided I was gonna add a headline underneath of here or a title. So if I click back on my shape and do Control T to get the transform handles, I'm gonna bring my shape oh, not in, I'm hold the shift key and bring it up so that I have room to add some type under here. And then um, I wanted to, the shape kind of turns parts of his ear white and I don't really like that. So I'm going to click on my brush, make my foreground black, and basically I'm just going to paint really on this mask. So I'm going to take my, whoops. Okay, so somebody asked about smart objects. Because I dragged this in, it made it a smart object and it's telling me it's going to temporarily rasterize it, which is fine. So you can ignore that for right now. If you're not familiar with smart objects, that's okay. But that's another uh, lesson. So I'm just painting over this a little where I don't want the bear to be see-through. Yes, go question. Uh, Apple commands. Um, I, somebody asked if I can give Apple commands. I, I tried to do that in a few places. I, I don't really use a Mac, but um, Typically, um, if you were using, when anytime I say Alt, it's Option on a Mac, and when I use Control, it's Command on a Mac. 
Um, so those are the two main ones. The other things would be the same. Um, so sorry if I forget, but I do try to remember. Um, okay, so now we are going to bring in a texture behind our bear. So I'm going to grab, and I want hit the texture to be under this layer, under our shape layer, because I don't want to cover it. So I'm going to select the background layer. Anytime you, you bring in another layer or add a layer, it's always going to add above the active layer. So just if you click this ahead of time, it just saves you having to drag the texture around. So I'm going to bring in a brown texture, and you can see it's in the background. I am going to rotate it and use my move tool to, whoops, I don't want to move my bear. I want to move my texture. So I got to make sure I'm clicking on the texture and not on the bear. And hold my shift key. And that's our texture. Now this is the one I mentioned about adding a white layer behind the texture. I want to lighten this a little bit. I don't want it to be this dark a brown. So I'm going to go in here and add a new blank layer. I'm going to switch my foreground to white and do the Alt or Option Backspace. And I'm filled that layer with white. Now if I come up to my texture, I'm going to lower this opacity to about 75%. So you can see it, it just became lighter. If I didn't have that white layer there, it would be transparent, which is not what we want. So that's the purpose of adding a white layer under textures, especially when you're working in the background. It's not important if you're putting them over your image, only if you're putting them in the background. Okay, so we've got about 10 minutes left. Hold on one second. Somebody asked, where am I getting my textures from? Right. These are all textures that I created that are for sale in my web store. Um, there's a set of grunge textures. Well, no, how, you how I drag them. I am dragging these in from a separate uh, monitor. I have two monitors that I'm working on. So I am dragging these from the other screen. If you're working with one monitor, you would just go file, open, and then open it from here. So you can see here's what we're working on and here's the texture. Okay. Um, so that part is done. The way that we added a drop shadow to our lettering before, I also like to do that to shapes for the same reason, to just give it a little more depth. This one, we're just gonna use the drop shadow and I'm going to use, let's see, where's my notes, opacity. 30% about there. So I'm going to type these in distance 11, uh, spread 45, and size 51. And you can see it's added a little shadow to it. So it just gives it that little extra depth, I think. And I did end up cloning this little branch out here that you noticed. Um, so now we're going to add our type. So I wanted that, I'm going to click here so the type will add above that. Click our type tool. And this one I'm going to use Maxim. Again, you can use whatever fonts you have. If you follow my blog on Tuesdays, and I just sent one out today, when I find um, links to freebies and, and bundles of, of you know things on sale for good deals, I list those in there. Um, so you can get typefaces for free. You can get a whole bunch, you know, really inexpensively. Um, so check the blog for that. So my color is going to be 393426. So I'm going to use a darker brown. And I want my point size to be 13 because this is a much smaller image. And I'm going to type, yep, let me click on here again. Did I lose my cursor? Where's my type tool? Hmm. Maybe I went, oh, I think I went too small. I don't want 13 point. We need 
54 point. Oh, reading the wrong, wrong command. All right, Kate's. Okay, there we go. Kate's Cove Bear in the Rain. All right, so that's our type. Now I want to move that a little, so I'm going to highlight it, keep my cursor off of it, move it down a little bit, and there's our type. And then we could go in and add a, I'm going to just show you the finish, finished because I want to get to our last project. Um, come on, open up. That's my finished image with the type um, and the drop shadow and an outline like we did on the previous one. Um, so that is our finished little guy. So he was very cute. He was looking at this whole line of photographers going, why are all these people looking at me? And then he ran away and looked for his mom after that. All right, so our last image is actually, let's bring it over from here. Um, it's a cabin, I call this somewhere in West Virginia. Um, we were on a trip with some friends a couple uh, years ago and pulled over, saw this cabin and thought it was really cool. This was actually a three-shot HDR image. Um, so I processed this first in Photomatix to get that. And then we're going to make some changes here. So I've duplicated it. I did use the healing brush to get rid of this one big post here. I just didn't really like that. And the healing brush did a pretty good job. Just sometimes you have to go over it a couple times. There we go. And I added a hue and saturation adjustment level because I had a little bit too much blue from the preset of the, uh, the merging. And I'm going to change my selection to blues. And I'm going to reduce the saturation quite a bit. So it looks a little more the color it should be. And then I'm going to go into Topaz, so I'm going to do that merge layer again, which would be the Control Alt Shift E. And let's go to Studio. And we're almost at five, so I think we're going to run a few minutes over, but that's okay because it'll keep recording. So as long as you can hang with me, we're going to finish this last project. And in here, I want to use under the looks. The category I wanted to use was under the grungy. And the one that I liked was decaying laurels. And I'm going to make a couple changes. Let me turn the page in my notes here. And we're going to apply it. So what you, once you select a look, when you hit the apply, that just opens up this panel um, so that you can then further work on this um, preset. And what I wanted to change here was this color overlay. It was kind of a little green for my taste, but I liked the overall look. So I'm just going to select that layer, and this is the only command for this preset. And I'm going to change this color to, I, I found the number I wanted, so I'm going to type it in, 282213. I'm going to make it a little more of a darker brown, and you can see with the selection over here. And that's more what I was looking for, more of a dark sepia kind of tone, but I really kind of liked it. It almost had a hint of green to the leaves, and I really liked the light coming through that part of it. So we're going to say accept, and that would be our finished project. Um, okay, we have a couple questions. So those that's the end of the projects I had. So let's see if we can answer a few questions here. Um, that's the end of it. Hold on, let me try to open up the little chat box here. And what's the question? At what point do you find your image or remove unused duplicate layers? My files become huge at a certain point. Um, what, at what point do I remove unused layers? Um, because I do sometimes duplicate layers, um, you could delete them if you want to. I typically don't unless I have um, a blank layer like I did when we were trying to add the second typeface. I 
you generally don't delete them, but you definitely could. I would probably wait till this point at the end. And if it, you know, if I turned it on and off and it wasn't changing anything, then I could definitely take that layer and remove it. Um, I always leave the background layer, so I'll never take that one out. Um, but you could, because that was just a duplicate layer that we didn't do anything other than this adjustment, which is still working on here, um, you can, you know, just go ahead and, and do that if you choose to. Um, let's say, rather the merge layers, can you select the layers you want to join together and make them a smart object? Yes, you could. Um, I think the next webinar I do, I'm gonna try to focus on smart objects because I've just started using them more um, lately and they're are some good times when you should do that. So thank you for that question. And I will, I promise next time, I will um, do some focusing on smart objects. Am I going to do a webinar on how to make textures? That's a great question. I am actually working on a, I, I want it to be a full course on how to make textures. Um, there are some instructions. And in, if you have my two eBooks, um, which are, let me open up my, my ending slide here so you guys can see the website address. Um, I do have two eBooks on making textures and in both of those I do go over a couple of ways that you can create them in Photoshop. Most of my textures are created with brushes in Photoshop. Some of them start as a photo and then I modify it from there. Um, and I do do free textures as well in the Sunday Sampler blog post. If you don't already get the blog, feel free to sign up for that. Um, but yes, I am going to do some more stuff on creating textures. And because there are so many ways of doing that, I think that is going to become um, an entire course. Um, but again, if you wanted to try a few different things, there are some in my ebooks and there are various things out there online as well. Um, I do have six new texture sets I just added to the store a couple days ago. Um, and those are on sale at 50% off, which is just $3 each. So you can check those out. Um, and again, the notes with the images and the textures from today's webinar are just $5 in, also in the Peacock Studio store. So if you go to MarythImages.com and either type in that link or just click on Peacock Studio, that will take you to the store. If you're looking to add to your um, Topaz products, they do have, um, it's Sharpen, I believe, right now, AI on sale. It's regular $99 on sale for $79. And if you use this link, which is my affiliate link, you can use the code Meredith Images and save an additional 15% on that or any other product on Topaz. And this link is also um, on my website and on my blog. Um, and if you need anything further, feel free to email me. It's hazel at meredithimages.com. I always love to hear from people. Um, you could join our Facebook group, Textures Turn, turn Ho-Hum into a Work of Art, um, and share your images there. And I always welcome questions, comments, all that stuff. And again, this is being recorded, so you'll get a link tomorrow to the recording. It will be on my Meredith Images YouTube page. I appreciate you all being here. Um, I plan to do another webinar in a few weeks, so stay tuned for that. Um, and if you have ideas for some other things you'd like to see me do, feel free to message me or email me. Um, I love to hear from everybody. Thanks so much. Have a great evening. Stay safe. Talk to you soon.